Psalms chapter 69 to the chief musician upon Shoshanenim, a psalm of David. Save me. Well, that's what Peter cried out when he walked on the water and saw the, saw the storms arising. That's the quickest prayer, that's the quickest and shortest prayer in the Bible. Oh God, for the waters are come. Oh, it is Peter. The waters are come into my soul. Listen, if you were to ask Peter after that, he'd tell you, you know what? Even with Lord Jesus Christ there, I thought I was going to die. The fisherman. Now you're going to go into another Bible character. You already looked at Peter. I sink in deep, deep mire, mud, goo. Jeremiah. Where there is no standing. You just, I, I, listen, I had that one time. Oh, when I was a little boy growing up. They had tore this whole land up, destroyed all the house and all that. They're going to build this complex. I were just running through there. Next thing you know, I'm putting my knees in mud and sinking fast. <laughs> Nowhere to go. No, nothing you can do. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. Drowning. You know, Lord Jesus Christ came through a flood through the waters and stepped his feet onto this muddy, disgusting, dirty planet. I am weary of my crying. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. My throat is dry. My eyes fail within. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. You know, you're waiting for God to answer the prayer and just you're in pain or whatever's making you cry. Your, your throat's irritated. And just you know what? You're all you're all out of tears. You can't see because you because of your tears. Your eyes are red. They're bloodshot. They're they're just soaked. It's a very serious prayer. They that hate me without a cause are more than than the hairs of my head. Oh, there's the Lord Jesus Christ. My eyes will get better so I can read some of these notes I got. Some of the notes are in here. They hated Jesus without a cause. Envy, Pilate says, and that's not a cause to hate. They that would destroy me. And I believe a couple places in the Gospels where we're told they took counsel to destroy him. See how the Bible uses the words? It matches. I bet you the new modern Bibles don't match. I bet you they changed that word destroy there and they changed it over the gospel to another another word. But here the Hebrew and the Greek agree with each other. If you use the original Hebrew, if you use the original Greek, it would not match. And you wouldn't you would ruin the cross reference. Thus you have an incomplete Bible. Leave the Bible alone. The Holy Spirit knew what language we speak. He knew what words would be. Let the Holy Spirit do it, not man. Be my enemies wrongfully. Yea, all they that, that live godly shall suffer. All live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer. Are mighty. They're strong. They have power. They had power to go to Pilate and say, here he is. Now crucify him. Listen, the Jews were a pain in the neck to the Romans. If there's one group of people that the Romans did not want was those Jews. They were bickering and causing all kinds of problems. You know why Pilate did what he did? They gave him to shut up. That's why he did it. They tried to please him with, with fixing up and building that temple. That didn't work. Then I restored. 
that which I took not away. Well, if he didn't take away, what did he restore? Christ was sinless. You know, Christ gave us life. Christ didn't give us death, but he gave us life. Eternal life. Listen, man chose the death. God said, listen, don't do it. Man did it. You can't charge God. Oh, why do we die, why do we die and, and blame God? You can't charge God. God didn't do that. But he restored our life. He gave us life. If you believe on what he, whatever dispensation you are in. If you trust and obey and do what God said during that dispensation today, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, he didn't give us death. Death was a result. The wages of sin is death, not God. The way you know, it's not God is the is the wages of death. That's not it. God had nothing to do with our sin. Oh God, thou know thou knowest my foolishness. There we go. It's me. I'm the foolish one. Not God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool thinks he can do whatever he wants to do and, and continue to keep on doing it. And being foolisher. So thou knows my foolishness. So what does God say about preaching? With foolishness, uh, the foolishness of preaching. God conforms the world with us preachers with using something stupid as preaching. I'm not saying the message. You now the Bible's out there will say the message. I'm saying, I mean, what, what is it to get up and, you know, you're going down the beach and hear some guy standing there with a megaphone telling you about Jesus. Well, what is that? Every Sunday morning, you put your best clothes on. You go hear a guy speak out of a wooden podium, and boom, 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 boom. What is that? To the unsaved man, when you invite him out to church, that's that's stupid. That's foolish. And you know what? That's what the Bible says. We're foolish. That's what we are. And my sins are not hid from thee. You can't hide your sins from God. Ecclesiastes 12, 14, Romans 2, 16, 1 Corinthians 28, 9, Hebrews 4, 13. About being hid from God. You can't. Adam tried to hide. You know, Adam Adam put fig leaves on him, and then he went and tried to hide from God. It didn't work. It didn't work. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord. Lord, we're impatient. Lord, answer speedily. Lord, Lord God of hosts, all the angels, all that there. Be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake. O God of Israel. It's a prayer. Let me not be a hindrance. Let me not be in your way, God, for answering someone else's prayer. You know, there are people out there that you hinder God from answering. You say, how do you, how do, you do that, Brother Stanley? I'll tell you how. One mother is somewhere praying for her dear children to get saved, dear child to get saved. And God tells you to go witness to that her child wherever it is. And you won't do it. You are hindering the prayers of that mother. God has someone who needs a little money for whatever it is. And God chooses you to say, hey, I want you to give some of that money to that Christian there. He needs it. And you, you keep the tight wad in your wallet. That other guy's praying. He Lord, help me. I, I, I and the Lord will answer down, I'm trying to help you, but the guy I want to use for the blessing. Lord, why won't my son get saved? I'm trying to, but the guy who I'm trying to get. That's a hindrance to prayer for someone else. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Peter, Jeremiah, 
Shame has covered my face. I don't know if shame could cover Jesus' face. But you do know that when he was on the cross, there were no clothes. Now, I don't think Jesus could suffer shame. As far as, now let me be careful. Because shame is a thing of pride. Okay? You're too proud to be, have, I mean, listen, Jay Walker's run because of pride. Not Jay Walker's, uh, streakers run because of pride. I mean, I got a little bit overhead on, on this word shame here, but shame, there's an element of pride because you know what? People can see something about you. He bore our sorrows and our shame. But God, there is no pride. They, they, he's up there on the cross and they're mocking him. He took it. He was not embarrassed. It didn't bother him to talk to the repentant, the, the repentant thief. It didn't bother him to pray about us first before he died. Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. Even Stephen in his own prayer, he prays for him. Check it out. He prays for himself, then he prays for the people. Acts chapter 7. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, Jews. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. An alien unto my mother's children. You know, not one of his, not one of his brothers or sisters believed unto him, believed on him while he was alive. Some after he died and rose from the grave, but not before. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it was too. Their shame that they had a brother named Jesus and everything happened to him while they were on the while he was living. Listen, there was one time in the Gospel of John. Well, why don't you just go up to Jerusalem, do your things, Jesus? And then what they were saying is, get out of here. We don't want to have you around here. And they were in their hometown. For the zeal of thy house, the temple, has eaten me up. The center of Jerusalem, the center of the worship, the center of God, right in the middle of the mix of Jews. His zeal was to do what God wanted him to do. You know, he fulfilled the entire law in one life that we cannot do. And the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Marvel not, the world hates you. And they hated him. You know, there's not one person that rose to his defense. Oh, yeah, Peter did it in the garden. What about when the Roman soldiers were surrounding him as he's walking up to Golgotha? Where was the defense there? Who spoke? Who went to Pilate besides Pilate's wife and said, Hey, you know this guy? When I wept, Jesus wept, and chastened my soul with fasting, Jesus fasted and wept all the time. He was up on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Then the tempter came. The Bible records that, and he was hungered. Did you get that? So what's Satan come up and do? He offers him a bite to eat wrongfully. And was to my reproach. The hungry Lord, if you're really Jesus, command these rocks to be bread. Tempted Jesus just like he tempts us. I may sackcloth also my garment. Itchy, vile kind of covering. And it was a sign of repentance. It was a sign of sorrow. It was a sign that I am nothing but dirt. Lowest of low. They got him, you know, him and his mother all dressed up in purple and everything like that. And I became a proverb to them. And he's a proverb today. There are jokes about Jesus left and right. 
It is, it is reported commonly among the Jews that his disciples came and took away, took took him away. They that sit in the gate speak against me, judges, the the elders of the city, the rulers. What a shame. You know, the, 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 the people that sit in the gates of the cities of America today, the Capitol buildings of all 50 states, the Capitol building of all 50 states, the judges, the city and the town halls all speak against Jesus. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. See, I'm allowed to go into our city council and pray in Jesus' name before they have their meaning. Yeah, and pray in the name of Jesus that any Mohammedans in this room, any Roman Catholics in this room, any morons in this room, any Jehovah Witnesses in this room, I pray in the name of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, that they see that they're wrong. And see the suffering you'll get and see what time you'll get called back to the next meeting. When you got that little nursery rhyme prayer, Lord, just ask you to bless this me. Little butterflies and, and, and bees flying around the room in Jesus' King's name. Fluffy talk prayer. But when you go in there with the truth, no one would dare to invite me into any prayer of any civil thing. They wouldn't trust what my lips would say. Can you imagine at the end of this month they're going to have that stupid race down Daytona Beach? Can you imagine they call them, hey, you're a preacher on the street? Yes, I am. Well, we need someone to come and bless the 500. Come on in and take the microphone. Oh, you know that smile will be plastered from ear to ear. I get up there and say, ladies and gentlemen, repent! Turn and burn! And you'll never see me inside that place again. Oh, you were just supposed to say this little prayer. Every man that's going to drive a car today cannot go right. Cursed be the cigarettes and the booze or stickers on all these cars. What are you doing here on the racetrack on a Sunday when you should be in your church house? No, don't ever bring him back. And then they'll be they'll be calling up Daytona. Please, we need apology. Uh, we need to get an apology. We need to get an apology. We offended the people. The people are offended. Get an apology. Get them out. Run them out. I was a song of the drunkards. You know what? That's funny. What is it? Is it America? Or is there, is there a national anthem that used to be an English Junkard song? You know your you know your songs that you that I heard in the bar room had Jesus' name in it? Bye bye, Miss American Pie, whatever the thing is, there's Jesus in it. Um uh, the birds sing. Uh, uh, oh, turn, turn, turn. Ecclesiastes is in there. Check out the, the lyrics of some of the songs from the 70s and 60s. You'll find Jesus in there. It's a drunkard song. And now you know what? It's moved into the Baptist churches. It's called CCM. It's called Southern Gospel. I'll tell you, I sat listening to one of those drunken songs as I thought about in a church, in a pew, in a church, a Bible-believing church, and thought about having a beer and shooting pool. And then you know what? Those people that sing those hymns and all that, and they've been tested, most of them, you, you ask them what their testimony is, they ain't got no testimony, and you don't know what their private life is. Maybe they do have beer. <coughs> Maybe they do drink and smoke. And corrals. I know one of them did. I know one of them singers committed adultery. Openly.
Imagine a church that that has intoxicating liquor as their mass or as their uh their their Lord's table, and then they get up and sing a song, the drunkard song of Jesus. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord. And Jesus prayed constantly to the Father in an acceptable time. You know what? Jesus didn't pray all the time. There was a time when he preached. There was a time when he healed. There was a time he headed to a certain spot. There are people, oh, we're a bunch of monkeys, and we just give our whole, whole life to prayer, but we don't do nothing. We just give our whole, no, 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 no. Uh, Solomon said there's a time to work, there's a time to rest, there's a time to die, there's a time to live, there's a time to break down, there's a time to fix up. And listen, prayer is not all... Well, the Bible says abstain. I mean, uh, the Bible says uh, pray without ceasing. And you take it out of context. I could do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Well, let me have you put a Superman cape on and jump off a building. Let's see if you can do that in the name of Christ, okay? As for, you know, we got the sample around. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, not this Sunday. Or Sunday night. Oh God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me. Cry out to God for, mer for mercy in hearing you. Maybe what you're going through is, is a judgment. It's a sinful. Satan's attacking. <coughs> Maybe rightfully attacking. Cry out for mercy. In the truth of thy salvation. Well, what's the truth of, of thy salvation? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. I'm one who said death. How about that? In the truth of thy salvation. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver me out of the mire. Well, it's doing the mire since two. Pick me up, Lord. You know, to get out of mire... It, you, it's a picking up. You can't walk through, maybe drag out, but it's an out. Not a cross, not an over. It's an up and out. And let me not sink. You say, how far can you sink in mire? All the way. And if you, you sink down to your knees, You'll still die if you don't get no pulling out. Because you can't go nowhere. You can't go get food. You can't get water. Let me be delivered from them that hate me. Well, the only way that's going to happen today is death or rapture. Lord, please get this person out of my life. because he called. You better watch how you pray that prayer because maybe the next one will be even worse. You know that? You ever think about that? Or this person's giving me a bunch of trouble. And I, you know, I'm doing right. I'm a Christian. The guy said, okay, I'll answer that prayer. That person's gone out of your life. I'll give you somebody worse. <laughs> and out of the deep waters. Deep waters are drowning. They're over your head. At least the mire, I mean, there's some point it, it can stop. What footing do you get in deep waters? None. Now, I've almost drowned one time. I know that feeling. When you're out there in the water and you're splashing around arms and legs and there's nothing to hold you up to keep your head above water. Nothing. At least if a mire, I mean, at least maybe if there's a rope there or, or, or something that maybe you can grip on to give you a little hope. Now, it doesn't say that in the mire, but I'm saying, if there's something there, there's, there could be a little hope. But if you're drowning in the deep waters, there's nothing. Now, I thank God that however God did it, that raft was there for me to catch. All I needed to do is catch it once. And I was able to pull myself. And I was no more in the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Death. Anybody care to guess who that one was? Jonah. And yes, Jonah died. 
You do not go three days and three nights in water under your head and survive unless you're in a submarine. Oh, they're saying that we sell submarines in the snow. Knock it off. Jonah was three days and three nights overflowed me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit, that's a hole in the ground, shut her mouth upon me. The grave. It's death. Can you use that verse there to, to prove that Jonah died? 89% I think you can. But when Jonah says out of hell and the bar, her earth and her bars... Okay, Peter, Jeremiah, Jesus Christ, Jonah. Hear me, O Lord. Isn't that what Jonah says something like that? Out of the belly of hell I cried. For thy, my, out of the belly of hell, by, in hell, I mean, he died on the planet. <laughs> Find me one person walking around the earth today that's in hell that's alive. It don't happen. You gotta die to go to hell. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Yes, it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Lord is not willing that any should perish. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. It's only God's tender mercies. That we don't die and go to hell. The fact that there is salvation is attend the mercy of God. Explain to me why man gets saved outside the love of God. You know, no animal goes to heaven ever. Why exclude them? Why are they under the curse? What did they do wrong? What is man that thou art mindful of him, the Bible says. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servant. You don't want God to turn his back on you. You know that prodigal son, when he left, you know that father's face kept on looking down that road? What does the Bible say? It says, as that son was on his way home, who saw who? The father saw the son. For I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Answer me now, Lord. I'm in trouble. I need help. Lord, I need my eyes back. I need to be able to see again. Get my glasses mixed up, my old ones and my new ones. I don't like to see fuzzy pages. I don't like to see the words dancing around. Lord, help me to pray for someone who does have such things. Draw nigh unto my soul. Draw nigh. What is that? That's coming close. That's like a boat that has a has a rope and it's out there and you're on it and you pull the boat closer to you. Come to my soul, the living source that I have, the eternal being, the trouble I have, Lord, come to the eternal being of who I am. That part of me that will live all eternity and redeem it. Lord, buy it back. It's under Satan. It's under sin. Buy me, Lord. Little boy with with a, with a sailboat. He he builds it and then he loses it and he finds it and he goes and and works for it and gets the money and then buys the boat back. That boat's crying out, "It's my, it's it's mine. Deliver me because of my enemy." And you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pray at times to God. You know what? You'll get overwhelmed. I've had that. I'm not going to say where, but listen, I was just getting overwhelmed. The people I thought that should 
should back me up weren't. I didn't know which way I was going. You know, another good book that people need to read is Holy War by John Bunyan, not Paul. And that's a perfect book on how Satan gets into the Christian's life. And then the Christians turn on God. It's a real interesting book to read. To me, it's harder reading The Pilgrim's Progress. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before thee. Everything, Lord, you know about and everything that is, you know. Reproach seems to be the word of this chapter. Have broken my heart. And I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. You know, the Bible records that Jesus turned around after the cock crew to find a weeping Peter. And Peter ran off. Why did he run off? Why did he just go up to Jesus, wrap his arms around and say, I'm sorry, right then and there? But there was none. Only John and the women stood by Jesus at the cross. And for comforters, when I am gone and gone off to the Father, I'll send you a comforter. But I found none. Jeremiah only had one friend, two helpers in his entire ministry. You know, even the disciples didn't believe it was Jesus after he arose from the grave. It says at one point, that when he first went into the room, I believe it's the Gospel of John speaks about, he says he reprimanded them. He, he reproved them because of their unbelief. They lived with him for three and a three, 33 and a half years, well, three, three and a half years of his 33 years of life. And he walks into the room and they look at it and they don't even believe it. You don't think it's about Jesus? They gave me also gall for my meat. And in my thirst, I thirst, but he said, they gave me vinegar to drink. Matthew 27, 34, and verse 48. Ever wonder when Jesus asked for water? He never got it. What did the woman at the well? He says, give me a drink. She left her pail and went and got the whole city to come for him to come preach to him. And every preacher I see have a bottle of water or a jug of water at the pulpit. Mm -hmm. even, a, even a preacher cannot go as far as Jesus did. And Jesus preached on the cross to the repentant thief, and to us without a glass or cup of water. And you get a pre... Listen, I'm doing a bad thing of water right there. I'm just as guilty. We are not. We let the dryness of our mouth where Christ. Let their table become a snare before them. Who's that? Those that were yelling crucify him, those that were against him, those that were mocking him, those that gave him the vinegar and gall. That's Jesus praying. What would Jesus do? He pray against them. How about that? And that which should have been for their welfare 
let it become a trap. Jesus did not pray, God bless you, my, my son, and go off and whatever. May your life be full of traps. He knew their hearts. He knew they'd never get right. Like Pharaoh in Moses' time. Pharaoh fell for every trap, every snare, because he didn't want to serve the God of the Hebrews. Let their eyes be darkened, blindness, that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake, nervousness. And their eyes may not be just blindness, it may be to spiritual light. That's worse death. The worst death you can have is to have darkness or blindness of spiritual light. Pour out thy indignation upon them. That's Jesus praying. And let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Those that gave him the, the, the gall. Those that gave him the vinegar. Those that put him there. You think God's going to pat them on the Listen, you think God's going to put those men that put Jesus on the cross and allow them into his holy heaven? You really believe that nonsense? You think God will approve of rapists being in, in heaven with the victims they had? You are a jackass. You're just trying to cover up for your own sins. This is Jesus Christ is praying about those that put him on that spot. A wicked and adulterous and evil adult, uh, uh, generation. God is not going to allow them into heaven. Get off this thing that God's going to save everybody. Because he's not. Let their habitation be desolate, nothingness. And let none dwell in their tents. Vacancy. For they persecuted him, Jesus, whom thou, Jesus, has smitten. Isaiah 53. Why is 22, 23, 24, 25 spoken of? Because they persecuted Jesus and they smit in him. You think the guy that smoked Jesus in the face and covered his head and said, Tell me who it was, Jesus. You think Jesus is going to appreciate having him in heaven? Do you think that somebody who hates Jesus Christ is going to appreciate heaven forever? And they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity. Double. Ooh. You know those people that did what they did to Jesus? Is going to get a double damnation in hell. There are degrees in hell. Even the way Satan treated Jesus with a little respect in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. You know that? Satan didn't smack him in the face. Satan didn't smite him with anything. Man did. And let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them never come into heaven. Righteousness. The Bible records there are some people that will never go to heaven. Matthew 25 says hell was built. 
for Satan and his angels. If every man goes to heaven, then Satan and his angels has to go to heaven. Wrong. They will start the whole mess all over again. That's the man's utopia. Ready? Let's keep on going. Let them be blotted out of the book of living. What does Revelation 20 say about that? If their names were not written in the Lamb's book of life, they were cast into heaven and lived for glorious in New Jerusalem. You're full of it. You're full of it. Here I go. I'm getting my drink of water. It says they were cast into the lake of fire. The Bible records that some men will burn in hell no matter what you think or teach in your pulpit. God is not a humanist. He's a salvationist. A righteousness, a holiness, and not be written with the righteous. I will be offended if one of these people that treated my Lord and Savior like this was in heaven right next to me. What did Jesus tell Thomas? Thomas says, My Lord, my God, and Jesus said, but I, I'm mis, misquoting this. But he says, those that have more faith that have not seen me, that believe, greater are them. Listen, those guys saw Jesus and look at the way they treat him. I've never seen Jesus and look how much I love him. I'd be offended if these guys were there with me in heaven. I'd be offended if one of those Pharisees that did not believe on him was in heaven with me after he saw Jesus walk around and kept interrogating him and kept giving him a hard time. I'd be offended if that Pharisee that got wicked and angry anytime time Jesus healed somebody. I'd be offended if he was in heaven. Where I hear a brother give a testimony in the Lord or a sister give a testimony in the Lord that the Lord has blessed their life and done something. Where I get happy and rejoice. Some Pharisee good move. Blah, 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 blah. Lord, I'm not. I'm. I'm a good guy. Lord, I time. I'm not like him. And and it, see a guy like that in heaven, I'd be upset. But that guy wouldn't look up to heaven. Most praise the Lord, forgive me, and Lord be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm not worthy. That's the one I want to be with. But I am poor. And sorrowful. Jesus was poor and he was sorrowful. He didn't own nothing but the clothes on his back. You know where he slept most of his time? He slept out in the mountain. There was one point it says when and they were by Peter's house, and Peter went out to the mountain where Jesus was praying. Jesus told the guy, he says, Listen, the foxes have holes, the birds in there have nests, the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. And sorrowful, he wept. He wept a lot more than what the Bible tells you. Paul, I mean, John says, if we were to write everything about his life, all the libraries in this world couldn't handle it. He was a man of sorrows, the Bible says. And you get a Christian, <laughs> I get depression, runs off a doctor and takes pill, 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 pill. Jesus didn't take pills. I, but I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. Oh yeah, it's set up on high, up on a, uh, up on a cross. As the serpent was lifted up in the, in the wilderness with Moses, he says in John chapter three, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Oh, they set him on high. They nailed him to a cross. And now he's sitting on high at the right hand of the Father. All the angels right now are, are smiling right now because we're, we're praising the Lord Jesus Christ. 
all kinds of funky messages we got yesterday, uh, I mean Wednesday, and the one that we heard who was preaching about, you know, the growth of Christian. <laughs> Somebody like that talking about a Christian growth. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. So your hymnals should be about all about Jesus, all about God. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that has horns or a hoof. What is that about? God gets more pleasure out of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. We don't have to bring an animal. We bring the blood of Jesus Christ. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live and seek God. It takes to be humble to be saved. You need your life broken to be saved. For the Lord heareth the poor and despises not his prisoners. We're a prisoner in this rotten planet to, to other men. <clears throat> Let the heaven and the earth praise him and the, the seas and everything that moveth therein. Everything is to praise God. Everything in Revelation chapter 4 is made to please God. For God will save Zion. Yes, he will. And will build the city of Judah. Yes, he will. That they may dwell there. They will. And have it for a possession. Yes, it's going to happen. Not yet, but it's going to. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it. The Jews. And they that love his name shall dwell therein. You know, we're going to be able to go to that to New Jerusalem. We're going to live in New Jerusalem. And I believe we're going to be able to go down to that new earth and visit the Jews, God's people, and have that perfect harmony and that perfect love and that perfect holiness with God as our Father. Make a joyful noise. 